Hello, everyone, and welcome to Explore Classroom. Let's get set up here. My name is Carmen Ortiz, and on behalf of National Geographic Education, I am so happy to see you all today and welcome you to another episode of Explore Classroom. At National Geographic, we believe in the power of exploration, wonder, and storytelling to change the world for the better. Explore Classroom connects students around the world with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons, followed by time for your questions. We've been running events every Monday and Thursday, but at the end of this week, we're going on winter break like so many of you are. Our episodes will be back up in January, on January 18th. Until then, all of our past events are available to watch here on YouTube whenever you'd like. Today, we are very lucky to be joined by Marina Rivero. Marina is an explorer who is dedicated to protecting Baird's tapirs, which are a unique long-nosed mammal from Central America. Today, Marina is going to tell us about her work and we'll get to know the amazing endangered tapers a little bit better. But before we get to Marina's lesson, I'd like to acknowledge that we're joined on screen by several student groups. And we have hundreds of students registered from all over the world to participate with us today. Today, we have students joining from California, Connecticut, Canada, DC, Germany, Hawaii, India, Ireland, Illinois, Maryland, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Oregon, Vermont, and Washington. I also want to give a few special shout outs to Abby, Adam, Cooper, Kaya, Paul, and McMurray Middle School, Miss Lorelei Alder's class, Mrs. Collins fifth grade class, Miss Swick's class, Rosedale Elementary and School 22. I'm so glad to have you all here with us today. And with that, it's time to turn it over to Marina for today's Explorer Classroom lesson. So she's gonna share her screen and then we'll get to hear from her. So excited, Marina. Thank you very much, Carmen. And thank you all of you for being here today. I will share my screen. Now, can you see it? Um, Wait a second. Yes, we can see it. Is full screen or it's only? It's only the PowerPoint. Oh, yeah. That's it. OK, thank you for being here again. Uh, my name is Marina Rivero. I am from Mexico. And I'm going to talk about you about tapers. Who are they? How can we study them? And what are we doing to protect them? So first of all, I want to make an exercise with you. Uh, I want you to ask yourselves, uh, what do you think of when you heard the word taper? Or how would you describe a taper to someone who doesn't know it? If you ask me, I would say that a taper is a combination of different animals. It has a long snout, like an elephant. It has a body shape of a wild pig. And it has a feet look that looks very similar to the rhino. Pretty much the same, right? Uh, it is not a coincidence that tapers and rhino have similar feet because they are relatives. They belong to the same family that, that is called perisodactyla, which means that they have impaired number of fingers. In the case of the tapers and the rhinos, uh, they have three uh, toes in each feet. Horses also belong to this family perisodactyla. However, they only have one uh, toe on its foot. Uh, tapers have been in the fossil records for at least 40 million years. Uh, they are a very old, old group. Uh, its morphology haven't changed too much since they appear. It is why so, this is why so many people call them living fossils. Now, nowadays, uh, only four species survive. They are distributed mainly in the tropical uh, forests of Southeast Asia and Latin America. 
The Malayan paper, the one that is rounded in blue, is the biggest of the four species. Uh, it is very easy to, to identify this species because it has a white and black pattern. Uh, for me, it looks like it has like a, a panda costume. Uh, it lives in the pen peninsula of Malaysia in the, and in Sumatra, in the island of Sumatra. Then we have the Brazilian tape that is round in, in green. This species has like a mohawk in his head. Uh, it lives in the, in the tropical forest of the Amazon. And uh, well, it is distributed in, in, in Brazil, Peru, uh, Bolivia, and more. Uh, then we have the mountain tapir that is rounded in, in yellow color. This is the smallest tapir uh, species. Uh, it lives in the Andes, in the mountain. Uh, its characteristic is that it has a, a very fluffy fur to protect from the cold of the mountains. It also has like these uh, white lips. It's like if you have, have you drink too much milk and then you have this milk mustache, it looks like that. And then finally, we have the bird tapir, the species that I work with and that I will talk a little bit more about. Well, the bird tapir lives from South Mexico to North Colombia. It lives in very different ecosystems, including rainforest, cloud forest, pineal forest, semi-evergreen forest, and even in the beach. This last picture when the, that you can see in the, in the, in the, in the screen with the tapir and the, and the beach is, was taken in, in Corcovado, in Costa Rica. So tapirs also enjoy the beach. Uh, tapirs have many different characteristics, including, for example, that uh, it is the biggest mammal living in the tropical rainforest of Latin America. It can weigh around uh, 600 pounds or 300 kilos, and it has, it has the same uh, weight as, the, as, a, as a calf. Uh, well, tapirs has a very slow reproduction rate. Uh, pregnancy lasts around 14 months or one year and one month and only give birth to one baby. And the baby stays with its mom for around two or more years. So for a mother give uh, birth to another taper has to pass like around four years. That's why it has a very slow reproduction rate. Uh, this is a baby taper. This is how it looks a baby taper. Um, baby tapers when born and until around six months uh, present these patterns of spots and stripes to camouflage and to protect themselves from predators, including the jaguars and the pumas. Uh, they also said that uh, baby tapers uh, looks very similar to a watermelon. That is why uh, I put this watermelon there. Other cool facts about tapers. Well, they use whistles to communicate. Can you hear how, how it whistles? Maybe this is trying to, to reach his, uh, her, her mother or maybe it's calling, the mother is calling his baby. They are also very good uh, swimmers. This, is, this species is not the, the birth taper, this is the Brazilian taper, but I didn't have a better video of, of a taper swimming. Then uh, they are not just a very lazy animal. They are also very good seed dispersers. Um, they feed on fruits and, and seeds and through their poo, they disperse these seeds. And when they disperse these seeds, they help to regenerate the forest. This is why some people call them the gardeners of the forest. And because of this function that they provide uh, to the forest regeneration, they are also considered one of the best allies to combat climate change. So the next time you visit the forest and see tapir poo, feel grateful to tapirs for doing this job to maintain healthy forests. Uh, however, uh, although they are uh, very important for us, uh, tapir populations are declining because their home, the forest, is being destroyed uh, for cattle uh, ranching and for, and for fire. And in some places they are being poached and or being hit by cars when they are trying to cross the, the, the highways near the forest. So the experts estimate that there's only 3,000 to 6,000 individuals in the wild. And the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the IUCN, has enlisted these species as endangered. Um, 
Tapirs are very uh, elusive species. They don't want to be seen by humans. So how can we uh, study tapirs and learn more about them? Well, there are many techniques uh, to identify the tapirs. One of it uh, is uh, looking for their tracks. For example, the, 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 the footprints and the food are very characteristic uh, for the species. As I told you before, tapirs only has three fingers in their foot. So if you see a, a, a footprint, you will recognize immediately that that belongs to a tapir. Uh, also, the, the poo is very characteristic. They make uh, large amounts of poo. So if you are walking in the forest, you will notice at the moment that a tapir is there because of its poo. Another uh, way to uh, study the tapirs is using camera traps. Uh, this is a device that we put in, in the branches of the trees. And this is, this is a device that, when, that is activated with motion. So anytime an animal passes in front of the camera trap, the camera trap triggers and takes a picture or a video. So this is one of the best tools that biologists have uh, to, to study these animals. And what do we do with the information that we gather from the camera traps? Well, camera traps can, uh, we can learn many things about the secret lives of, of the animals and the tapirs. And we can see how they communicate, how they interact, and how they eat. For example, this, this male is marking its territory with, with the urine. He, he sprayed the urine, and then he can say the other tapirs that he, he's, he owns that trail. We can also see like feeding patterns. For example, this, this tapir is feeding on the fruits that he found in the floor of the, of the forest. We can learn also about the, the defense mechanisms that they have. For example, this tapir got stuck with a branch and he just got scared and he just went out running out of the danger. We can also see behaviors, for example, this one uh, with the two, two individuals. Tapirs tend to be solitary uh, species, but with these videos, we can now learn that they, they can be together, they can make social groups. Maybe this is a female and a male, a mating a couple, or maybe it's the mother and its half. We can also see these kind of videos, for example, the tapir, the, the mother with its baby tapir behind. And we know that tapirs are reproducing in this area, so for us, it's a very good uh, news. But what are we doing to protect these, these animals? Well, in 2016, I started a project in a place called Sierra Madre de Chiapas that is located in the state of Chiapas in South Mexico. I put it at my, a map of Mexico uh, and down in the, in the south part of Mexico, it's, it's the state of Chiapas. Uh, this is how it looks, Sierra Madre de Chiapas. Uh, it has here in Sierra Madre Chiapas, it's one of the smallest tapir populations. That's why we decided to, to, to focus in this area. Uh, this is how the Sierra Madre Chiapas looks like. It's a mountain range. Um, elevations go from 300 meters to 3,000 meters above sea level. Uh, this is a photo that I took when I was walking uh, to the top of the mountain. It was very, very early in the morning. And you can see these beautiful landscapes. In, the, in this place. You can also feel that you are walking in the, in the, over the clouds. Uh, it, uh, this picture I also took it when I was uh, putting the camera trap. And this is how it looks, the forest in these mountains. This is called, this type of vegetation is called a, a cloud forest because you will always see like a cloud between the, between the trees. It has different uh, tree species, including for, exam for example, the, the ferns, it has the, the oaks, it has some, some species called uh, brome bromelids. And in these parts of the, of the forest, it's always, the, the, the wind is always blowing. So you will always have cold up there in the mountains. Well, for the project, um, we start training local communities to help us set these camera traps. And we can learn a little bit more about the, the natural history of the species. 
Uh, and meanwhile, the communities were, were telling us why these mountains were important for them. So we placed many, many camera traps in these mountains, in this region, to know where the tapirs were, or where the tapirs are living, and how many tapirs do we have in these mountains. And when we finish our, our project, when we analyze all the information of the camera traps, uh, we found out that the tapirs are located in the most uh, hilly and elevated sites of the Sierra Madre de Chiapas, which in turn are the most remote and more inaccessible area for people where the people feel, where the tapirs feel more secure. This is the map that we developed with the information gathered from the camera traps. The, the blue or the purple uh, color represents the areas where the, where the species is present in, in the Sierra Madre de Chiapas. And the black lines represent the boundaries of the natural protected areas that are in this region. Uh, we also estimated the density or the, we estimated how many individuals of tapirs we have in this, in this mountain. And we found out that there's around 160 individuals left in this region. There is 30% less than we have 10 years ago. And this pattern, this uh, uh, reduction in the, in the numbers of the population are mainly associated to the transformation of the forest into cattle ranches. So based on the, on the results that we, we gathered, we decided to take action. And we start working with the communities that lives in, in Sierra Madre Chiapas to identify the areas where the tapirs are more vulnerable to poaching and habitat loss, which are the main threats for them in this region. And the area that we identified in, in collaboration with these communities is now the area that we are implementing surveillance and monitoring uh, efforts to protect the areas and to protect the species. But uh, we believe that children like you, like all of you, are the future and are our best allies to protect the tapirs. And that is up to you uh, that the species continue to exist in these places. So for, for the project, we, we are teaching the children from the communities all we know about tapirs. So they can start taking care and learn more how they can help to, to change uh, and to change the future of the species. So we do many, many, many activities with the children. We uh, have coloring books for them. We make a, a drawing contests with the children. Uh, we make rallies so they can answer questions about the tapers. And one of the activities that, that I enjoy the most is that we take these, these children to the, to the local zoo. Uh, it was very interesting because uh, children in these communities have not been out of their communities since they were born or they have been out very few times. So for, they, the, for them was like a very, like a big, because we take them out from their communities to, the, to this zoo. And then they can meet uh, the tapers in person because tapers are very difficult to see in these mountains. They are not very easy to see and they, they try to escape from humans. So this, is what, this was the best way to, to show them uh, how a taper looks like. So I think this was, one of the most incredible experience that we have uh, during this project um, because the, the children was really impressed about how tapers look like. And well, I have these few last uh, slides. I want to, to, to show you later, but I think it's important to say, how can you do, what can you do to, to help the tapers? So first of all, you, uh, you should share all the information that you learned today about the tapirs with your friends and your family. Something important is, uh, well, uh, show them how beautiful the tapirs are, why they are, they are important, and tell them why they are our best allies to combat climate change. Tell them about their poo, tell them about um, how they help to regenerate the forest. Mm -hmm. Also, it's important uh, to eat less meat and more plants, like the tapirs. Uh, the cattle is one of the biggest enemies for the tapirs or for all the forest, uh, because we are transforming uh, the forest into cattle ranches, leaving no space for taper and no space for the other animals. So this is the, a very easy way uh, to help the tapirs and your impact in the conservation of the, of the rainforest and the animals that live there will be huge. Uh, then if you want to, if you like animals, if you want to be a biologist, if you're interested in conservation, just go for it, just do it and, and you will, you, you will 
be very happy to participate in this kind of, of activities. And finally, stay tuned to NatGeo because they have amazing videos, amazing documentaries, amazing information on how to save the planet. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Marina. That I love learning about the tapers. I loved learning that they also like the beach because I love the beach. And so now I'm wondering, should I learn more about tapers and see what else we have in common? Um, thank you so much for sharing that. That was really nice and amazing. Um, all right, students, now's the best part of the day. We're gonna ask her questions. We're gonna get to ask Marina questions. So if you're watching us online on YouTube, please send us your questions now in the chat bar. Uh, we see all of the questions, every single one. So you only need to ask your question one time and we'll record it and we'll try to ask her as many questions as we can in the next few minutes. Don't forget to let us know your name when you're asking the question so that we can make sure we give you your shout out. If you're on screen with me, please make sure you have your nice loud voice ready and I'll let you know when it's your turn to ask a question. All right, Marina, we have some great questions coming in for you today. Our first question comes from Tyler, which I think, and I really enjoy this question. How long are their snaps, Marina? Their snaps when they sleep? Their snaps. Ah, their snaps. Okay, okay. I don't know, it's like 30 centimeters, more or less. Wow. And it's, it's prehensile, so they can, they can grab like the fruits and the, and the leaves that they are eating. They use it to, to grab it and to, and to take it to, to its mouth. So it's a very important organ for them. That's really long. <laughs> and yes. that's a great tool for them to have. Yeah. Um, we have another great question from Jason, who asks, what type of plants do tapers eat? Oof, they, are, they can eat many, many species of plants. In Mexico, for example, there's a list of at least 200 species of plants that they can eat. Uh, but they included like uh, leaves, they can eat fruits. They also eat the, the, the seeds of the plants. They, they, they also take it, uh, many species of, of grasses, uh, any, most, anything green, they eat it. They, they love to eat anything green and they have to take many, a lot of food because they are very, very big. They, they weigh, I told you, they weigh around 600 pounds. That is a lot. So they need always to be eating everything, like fruits, I told you fruits, leaves and, and grasses. Yeah, 600 pounds is a lot of food that has to be eaten. Through. Yeah. Great. All right, Kaya, we're going to go to you next to ask your question. Do you, um, they ever have siblings? And if they do, do they ever fight? <laughs> it's very weird that they have um, brothers or siblings because uh, they only have one, one baby per, per time. So it's very difficult that, they, that two brothers start like fighting. Uh, it has been documented that in zoos, they can have two like twins, but it's very, very weird. And I don't know if they fight. I suppose they don't because tapers are a very, uh, very peaceful, so I don't think they fight. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Kaya. We have another question from our YouTube chat from Sean asking, how old do the tapers get? Oof, that is a good question because um, we cannot know how long they live in the, in the wild. because we cut them unless they have a, a collar, but the collar can drop. So it's very difficult to know how long they live in the wild. But in the zoos, uh, they have uh, know that the tapers has lived around 20, 30 years. So they are very, uh, they, can, they can live a long time. Great, 
Great, thank you for that. And we're gonna go to Mrs. Collins next to ask um, one of her students to be called on to ask a question. I think Taylin has a question. Great, thank you. Oh. Can you unmute Taylin? Why did you choose to study tapers? That is a really good question too. I wanted to show you uh, some pictures that I have, uh, but because I was I started uh, my my work uh, with bats. I was studying bats, a species that well, a group of, of bats that is called the ten roosting bats. Let me try to open one presentation so you can see how the ten roost the ten roosting bats look like. Uh, here it is. I will I will pre make a presentation. Just wait a second. Compartir pantalla. Here it is. Can you see it? Well, these these are called the ten roosting bats. I was working with the, with this species. These kind of of bats modify the leaves of the palms to create its home. So. Um, so I was working with this species in the, in the Selva Lacandona, the, the Lacandona rainforest that is located also in, in the state of Chiapas, near of, the, of, near of Sierra Madre de Chiapas. And when I was doing this work with this species, with these with this ten roosting bats, I was like, always wanted to see a taper. And I was very stubborn that I wanted to see a taper and I want to see a taper. And, and I get obsessed with the idea of working with the tapers. And that was not possible. I, I was like, I was in the field like for months and I couldn't see a taper. I was also working. This is a picture of me with the people from, from, from Selva Lacandona, from the Lacandona rainforest. I was working in a project of my boyfriend that he was putting GPS collars to the, to the jaguars to learn a, a little bit more of, of their movements, how they move to try to identify corridors for the species. But, um, I was all, always obsessed with the idea to, to see a taper of, and working with a taper. So at the end, uh, I had the opportunity, Nat Geo gave me this opportunity to start this project with the tapers. And then I am working with, with this species that I think it's one of the most amazing species on earth. They are really, really incredible. Especially I was telling you about how ancient species are the tapers. They appear around 40 million years ago. Like no very weird, uh, very few species has the opportunity to live so many, many, many years. No? So that's made me like feel like grateful to be like with a with a, this living fossil, no, to, to learn more about these species. So that's why I decided to work with with tapirs. Wow, that is a long time for them to be around. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, Paul, we're going to go to you next to unmute and ask your question. Can tapers be dangerous or destructive? <laughs> tapers are not, uh, they are not dangerous. They, they are, uh, in fact, they are very, uh, very peaceful species. They, they don't like, like to, to get in trouble. Um, they, Sometimes they can be a little bit aggressive. If, they, if the mother is with its baby, they can be a little bit aggressive because they don't want to, because mother will protect its baby. But it's very, very difficult that they get um, uh, dangerous for, for us. So don't worry about them. If you see a taper, just enjoy the moment of looking at taper. And don't feel scared. Well, that's good to know. All right, we have a next, our next question coming to us from the YouTube chat. Jesse is asking, if the tapers population increases, will it be good or bad for the environment? Uh, it will be excellent because today, the taper populations are declining, has been reduced in around 50% in the last 50 years, so populations are in, in, in troubles right now. Uh, so if populations get up, 
will be super good for us because we will have more tapirs. And as I told you before, um, we need tapirs to combat climate change because they are helping to, re to regenerate the forest. So if we have more, more tapirs, we will have more forest and we will have more clean environment. Yeah, that sounds like a very good thing to help with the <laughs> environment then. All right, our next question comes from YouTube chat and Miss Butler's class. And they're asking, how often do you see tapers, especially in your work? Oof. I, that is, it's always like very hard, very hard, hard question for me because I haven't seen a taper in the wild. I have only seen one taper in the wild and it was in Costa Rica, in Corcovado, in that beach that you, you told me that that I showed you the picture of the, of the taper in the beach. That was the only time I saw a taper in the wild because as I told you, tapers are a very elusive species. They don't like people. More if they, they are treated, for example, in some places they tend to, to poach the tapers for meat, especially for meat, sometimes for, for fun, just for fun. So tapers don't like to be surrounded by people. So it's very, very difficult to see tapers in the wild. In Costa Rica, not so much, only the best place to see tapers in the wild is in Costa Rica. So um, yeah, I haven't seen too many tapers. This is why camera traps for me are like my best ally because I can see tapers all the time. I mean, I can see how, what are they doing in the, in the, in the forest. Got it. Another reason to appreciate those cameras then. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, Adam, we're going to go to you next to, and ask you to unmute so that you can share your question. First of all, I would like to thank you, Carmen and Maria, for inviting me to participate. And my question is, I know that you said that the tapers have a protective, like, Thing against predators, but are there any animals that do prey on the tapers, even with that? Thank you, Adam, for your question. And yes, they they are predated by jaguars and pumas. Um, the the predation mainly it's happens when they are babies because a, a taper is much bigger than a jaguar or a puma. So it's more difficult that they can prey on, on, on tapers. And it happens, sometimes it happens with the, with, the, with the babies, mainly. That's why the tapers has these, these stripes and dots patterns to protect themselves from, from these predators. Great, and Mrs. Collins, can you please call on another one of your students to ask a question? Alden, do you have a question? Um, another question that my students had when we were getting ready um, was, one of the questions was, um, how are the different types of tapers different? How, well, I showed you the, the, the image, but I can show you again. They are very different each other. I, I really enjoy, like, each of them are very different between them. Uh, I will show you again, this is lies. Sorry, sorry. Wait a second. Marina, another question that they had was, um, what plants do they eat? What plants? Yes. There are many plants. I, I, they, they can eat more than 200 species of plants. Um, I don't know, if I can tell you the names, but it will be difficult in, in Spanish. Um, but they really love uh, fruits, for example. They love the, I, I don't know the name in English, the mamey, uh, for example, th this big uh, fruit that is uh, like orange, the color is orange, uh, but they can eat many, many species of, of plants. They as I told you, they are so so big that they need to, to take many, many food. So they eat all the time anything that is in front of them. But they mainly prefer, like, for example, the, the seedlings, the, 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 the plants that are just getting to grow, they, they like that kind of plants. Uh, and the fruits, as I told you.
and this, uh, this is for answering these kids of papers. Um, we have four different species. Uh, for me, my favorite personally is the mountain tapir <laughs> because the white lips and the fur and the fluffy fur. Uh, I think it's very, very cute. Um, but yeah, it's very, they are very different between them. For example, the, Malay, the Malayan tapir is very, very distinctive. It has its black and white pattern. So you, you will immediately, immediately know that it's, we are talking about the Malayan tapir. Uh, the Brazilian taper has this mohawk here. It has the the, the skull has this um, the this this part like going up, so it looks like it has a mohawk. And the bird taper that is the biggest from the from Latin America, uh, it has this like uh, I don't know like whitish uh, cheeks. I don't know. I think they are very different. Maybe you can start like making your photo album so you can start like looking how different they are between them. One of my students drew a picture of one. Oh, it's so beautiful, the Malayan tapir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> nice. And that's a good start to what you suggested, Marina, with a, yeah. a book. I like that idea of comparing the different kinds. I was yeah, yeah. So oh, nice. So cool. <laughs> it, it looks like a panda, right? <laughs> with a long snout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, with a long snout. All right, thank you. So our next question is gonna come to us from YouTube chat. And uh, this question is from Sean. How long can they hold their breath underwater, Marina? Oh, nice question. I don't know. But in the video, it looks like it can do it like a, for a long period of time, like, I don't know, like one minute, two minutes. And then they, because of their snout is, is prancing, they, it can move. Uh, sometimes they use this, the, the, the nose, like a snorkel. So they just go up like, like this and they can be down in the water and, they, and, they, and the, the, the nose outside and just breathing like, like a snorkel. So. The, yeah. <laughs> well, that's so fun. This built in snorkel. Yeah. Um, our next question from the YouTube chat comes from Jesse, and she's asking what to do if you come face to face with a, ta with a taper in the wild. Okay, that's a good question. Just stay, stay like this, like no movement, no, not anything, just watch and enjoy the, the moment because you are very, very lucky to be in front of a tapir. As I told you, they are not very aggressive, so it will not happen anything if you don't bother the animal. So, so just stay quiet and enjoy the moment at looking at the tapir, the eyes. Great, thank you. All right, Kaya, if you have another question, you can unmute and ask. Um. Do they mate for life? Mm. Do you what? Sorry. Um. Do they like the like the dad taper and the mom taper mate for life? They start mating at around uh, four, three, four years, and they stop like mating. I don't. I don't know when they stop mating, but. but I think around 10, when they uh, have 10 years or something. I don't know, really, that's a good question. And I will make my notes to, to ask, for example, uh, some people from the zoo, maybe they can know more about this information. I will ask them. Very good question. All right, got a new research question there. Yeah. Great questions coming. Um, Paul, we'll go to you. If you have another question to ask, you can unmute. What is a group of tapers called? Uh, the name of, of the group, uh, it is called, the family is called Perisodactyla. Perisodactyl, I don't know in, in English, it's Perisodactyla. That means that they have a uh, per number of, of, of fingers, they only have three or one finger. That's mean Perisodactyla. Peri is like different, uh, or pair, 
and dactyl as on, in, in Latin means uh, fingers. So that's the name, perisodactyla. All right, and Adam, if you have another question, feel free to unmute and ask Marina. Why did you choose to become a biologist? Uh, that's a good question too. Uh, I think since I was your age or younger, I always loved animals. I always wanted to work with animals. In the beginning, I wanted to be uh, uh, a veterinary, veterinarist, I don't know, yeah. Um, but then, I don't know, I, I don't know if I have the, the gut, the stomach to work with blood and with that kind of things. And I decided to start to study biology. To, it's another way to, to learn about animals. And at the end, I think it was the best, um, the best choice I did for, for myself. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's another world. It's a, it's completely different that we are used to to study to learn. And if you really like animals, I I, I will tell you that that study biology because it's a very very beautiful uh, profession. Great. And I'm gonna take another question from the chat mm -hmm. from Patricio who asks, is there a volunteering program that folks who are interested can be a part of? Or um, how can those who are on the call and are falling in love with tapers here help them? Well, wow, that's also a very good question. Uh, I don't have like a voluntary program right now, uh, but uh, in Costa Rica, uh, they, I have a friend that has a very uh, nice project there who has, who has a volunteering and maybe I can give you the contact if you're interested in, in, in participating. Uh, and also I can uh, share with you, with the, with the, with the professor, with the, with the schools, some information and some uh, uh, resources, education resources that you can use and you can, for, for learning more about the, about the, the animal. And uh, if you if you want to work with the species and if you want to, to to start working with it, just go for it. And I don't, yeah, maybe contact. You can contact me, and I can I can uh, contact with another people that has this volunteering program. And, and yes, you can start working with the species. Great, and we'll take one more question from. Um, Mrs. Collins, and do you want to call on any students? Kaylin. <laughs> Great, thanks, Kaylin. Want to unmute? Do tapers eat any meat? Do tapers what? I didn't understand very well. Do tapers eat any sort of meat? Meat? Oh. They don't eat meat. They only eat plants. Uh, this is, yeah, they only eat plants and, and you know, they are not carnivorous. Um, other species eat tapers, like jaguars, I told you, but no, tapers just eat plants. Lots of plants, it sounds yeah. like for them. Really, really a lot of plants if they're that big. <laughs> So great. All right. Well, I'm going to ask you a final question, Marina. Um, what is, I'm sorry, what is a way that um, our future explorers here can stay involved in protecting the tapers as well as protecting the earth since it sounds like um, there's the, some benefit with that too. What advice do you have for our future explorers here? Yeah, this is, I, I didn't knew if it was good to share this opinion, but I think one, one of the ways that we can get involved and we can uh, try uh, to help these, these tapers are, I, I told you it was like eat less meat and more plants uh, because uh, deforestation, uh, due to, to cattle ranching is very, very severe, in, especially in Latin America. 
Uh, so if you want to get like involved in the conservation of the species, this is something that we can do daily and the, the impact on the conservation, not only of the tape of, of all the forests and all the species that lives in this forest will be huge. Like we need uh, like to change the way we think and we use the resources uh, and think a little bit more about the, the rest of the world, the, the animals the, that we share the world with. So I think that's the biggest advice that I will tell you. And the other one will be like, if you are interested in, in these kind of things, in, in the conservation, in the animal conservation, in the conservation of the rainforest, and go on on more of this, um, try to find who is doing this kind of, of job and try to uh, join uh, these, these groups and uh, share all this information that you have about the conservation and try to, to talk with your parents about the, the, these kind of things. So more people get involved in the conservation of, 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 these, of the animals and on, on, the, on the rainforest. That will be like my most strong advices. And also if you like biology, if you like conservation and more, you, you can study that kind of things and uh, just go for it. Just try to, to, to involve in this kind of, of work, that will be my advice. Beautifully said, I love that. Well, you all heard it from Marina who works with tapers directly, yourselves, um, ways that you can help from wherever you are in the world. I wanna thank Marina for this time here today um, and share with you all that you can check out Explore Classroom and many, many more uh, free and educational resources at nat natgeoed.org. Explore Classroom is going to be on winter break again, um, and so we'll see you in the new year. For all those celebrating, I want to wish you a happy Hanukkah and happy holidays to all of you out there who are nearing the end of this year. Thank you again, Marina, for spending time with us today. It's been very special. Thank you to our students for their thoughtful questions. And thank you to all of the teachers out there for making this happen. That's it. That's the end of our stream and our time with Marina today. Happy holidays, and we'll see you all after winter break. Thank you very much, all. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Jen. Thank you.